Hey guys, for today's video, we're going to be doing just a chatty Q&A while I put makeup on my face. This is actually so funny, but these just came in the mail today. These are the new Urban Decay Mini Naked Smiley palettes. They sent these over in PR, which hilarious timing because just yesterday on my second channel, my boyfriend and I did a roasting new makeup launches and this was one of the launches that we roasted. <laughs> so let's try them out. I actually think I'm going to try the Mucho Happy. So they have the Mucho Happy and the Chill Happy. Such lame names. But this is the Mucho Happy and this one, I actually, I kind of like this color story more. This is the Chill Happy. I'm really not into this Chill Happy color story. I just don't know what to do with those colors. But this one actually, I don't know, it looks kind of fun. I can definitely work with this one. I do like the yellow and this kind of like green looking duochrome. I haven't even swatched these yet. Like I'm truly just like just opening these for the first time basically. Yeah, I want to play with this one. I wore a yellow sweater to kind of coordinate with it. So we're going to play with that. Um, I think I'll save this one for another time. But first I'm going to start with my base makeup. So I'm just going to prime my skin with the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Primer. And for my base combo, I'm really trying to use up both of these things, possibly before my next Project Pan update. We'll see. I'm not sure, because that's coming up really soon, actually. February is almost over, which I can't believe. But for my foundation, I'm going to use a mix of the Kosas Concealer, the Glow Recipe Dew Drops, and the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. That's been just my go-to combo recently. I might actually have to take the stopper out of this concealer like now because maybe I can get one last use before I do that. All right, so let's just get right into some of these questions. So this first one I wanted to answer was, if you had the space and funds, would you buy every makeup item you want or are you happy to have a curated collection? Love your channel. Thank you so much. So if I had the money to just buy every single piece of makeup that I wanted, I wouldn't be spending that money on makeup. You know, like if I just had loads of money, I would be investing it or like putting it towards a house or just something else. But also, I just don't have any desire to have a big makeup collection. I don't think that would make me happy. Just with my personality, I, I don't know, I get overwhelmed easily if I have a lot of stuff. And I think it would just make me unhappy to have so much makeup that I wouldn't be able to use it all. So I would, I think no matter how much money I had, I would always want to have a curated makeup collection. Um, by the way, yes, I did color my hair and my scalp is still stained because I haven't actually like washed my hair since I colored it. So if, if you're wondering why my scalp is red, that's why. Okay, I thought this was an interesting question. If you could have a dream profession, what would it be? Imagine you have all the talents, knowledge, and training and licenses already. So, I mean, honestly, like if you ask me what my dream job is, I would say YouTube which is also what I'm doing for a job right now, which is just crazy. I cannot believe that. But if I were to pick something other than YouTube, I, I think I would want to be a cat-only veterinarian. And the reason why I picked this one is because I've actually, I've thought about going to vet school before, but unfortunately my bachelor's degree was not in any sort of science. So I would have to go back and take undergraduate classes to get all the pre-vet requirements out of the way and then go to vet school. So that would just be so much time and money. And at this point, I just don't think that's gonna happen. But if I had to pick one career where I could just snap my fingers and have all the training and schooling and everything and just be prepared to go into that job right away, I think that would be it. Like, I think if I weren't doing YouTube and I were going into another field, I would wanna work with animals in some capacity. And I think I would be good in some sort of medical type of job, but I don't really wanna work on the human side of medicine. And I used to think that I wouldn't be cut out for anything involving like blood or surgery or needles or anything like that. But one time I did volunteer in the spay neuter clinic of our local animal shelter. And I actually surprisingly found that I really wasn't bothered by seeing surgery. Like I was standing right there watching like surgery happen on kittens and puppies and full-sized dogs and stuff and I really it didn't bother me one bit like I didn't feel squeamish or anything so after that experience I always felt like I always kind of kept it in the back of my mind like maybe I would like to become a vet or a vet tech or something the other thing is I don't think I would want to work with dogs 
I, it's not that I don't like dogs. I think a lot of times people ask me like, oh, do you not like dogs? Because, because I am a cat person, we have three cats. People just assume I don't like dogs for some reason. I do like dogs. I'm just not really a dog person. I think I would be scared that, you know, because dogs can be really out of control, especially if their owners haven't trained them to behave well, which is very common that people don't pro properly train their dogs. And dogs, unlike cats, dogs can actually hurt people, like, badly, you know? And so that kind of scares me a little bit. I'm not scared of dogs, you know, like, I don't mind being around dogs and stuff, but I'm just very aware that big dogs could attack me, you know? And I don't know if I want to be putting myself in that position. And I know, like, as a vet, you have, you know, assistants and, like, people helping you. It's not like you're the only one there to handle animals, but I'm not, like, a super big, strong person, you know? Like, I'm a very small person, so I don't know if I would be cut out to handle, like, really big dogs or just big animals in general. Um, so that's why I would want to stick to the cat side of things, but I'm sure it's harder to do that. So, okay, what is your opinion about Charlotte Tilbury? Do you think it is overhyped? And if you would buy an item from them, what would it be? I definitely do think that the brand is overhyped. I just feel like you kind of can't escape hearing about Charlotte Tilbury products. At the same time, I mean, she does make good products. I think I've only tried three Charlotte Tilbury products in total. And I do feel like the Hollywood Flawless filter, I, this has actually grown on me a lot. I really like it now, but I wouldn't spend the money to get this one again. I'd want to get like a cheaper alternative to it. The Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow I've also tried, way overhyped. There is no reason why that eyeshadow should cost over $30. And my favorite Charlotte Tilbury product is of course the bronzer, the airbrush bronzer. I do really love this bronzer. It's, stu it's stupidly expensive. I really view Charlotte Tilbury like I view any luxury brand. It's nice to treat yourself sometimes to a super fancy luxe product, but I don't think their products necessarily stand out as being way better than other less expensive brands. So that's kind of how I feel about that. But if I were to pick another Charlotte Tilbury product to buy, it would probably be one of the blush wands. Is that what it's called? That's probably what I would want to get. Or maybe the contour wand. One of those. <laughs> one of those liquid cheek products is probably what I would want to try next. Um, just because it seems like not a single person doesn't like those products. So yeah, if I were getting, maybe I would like buy myself that as a birthday present or something, you know, but I do think the brand is overhyped. Absolutely. How do you, after thoughtfully deciding that a makeup item will get used, don't have anything quite like it and is in your budget, make a makeup purchase without guilt? I would say I really have tried to remove any sort of guilt or shame from my makeup routine, my beauty routine, because to me those are just two emotions that like don't accomplish anything and I know that I have good spending habits in place I'm using my Becca highlighter after I've considered a purchase thoroughly enough I just think from there there's no reason to feel any guilt for purchasing that thing because it's the same as any other hobby I guess you should just try not to feel guilty <laughs> I don't know if that helps, but yeah, just don't feel guilty. If you've thought about, if you've thought through a purchase and you know that it's a good decision for you, then there, there's no reason to feel guilty about it. Sometimes I think that makeup, because it's something that is primarily marketed towards women, sometimes there's this element of, like, we have guilt for liking makeup because it's seen as frivolous or shallow to, you know, spend time doing something for yourself or doing something appearance related that automatically is labeled as shallow. And I think that's where a lot of that guilt comes from. But I think we should all try to just get that guilt out of our lives because it's not helping anybody. And I think it's important to make thoughtful purchases and make sure that you're not just buying more stuff than you need or more than you could use. Or I'm not advocating that we just start impulse buying makeup left and right, but it's no different from any other hobby to me. And, you know, I don't think, like, I don't think my boyfriend feels guilty when he buys a video game. That's one of his hobbies. Like, it's the same thing. Like, people have hobbies. Makeup is one of them. So there's no reason to feel guilty for it. Are there any brands, makeup, skincare, clothing, etc., that you flat out refuse to support? The main one that comes to mind is Shein and any of their subsidiaries. I just stay far away from that company. I mean, you can look up all of the various human rights issues with that company. 
Um, they're basically just like the worst fast fashion company in the world. And a lot of their clothing pieces have been tested and found to have unsafe amounts of lead in them. I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to buying fast fashion, especially if that's all you have access to. I mean, a lot of clothing is just expensive, so you gotta get what you can afford. But if I'm gonna buy inexpensive clothing, I mean, usually I try to shop at thrift stores, but otherwise, I mean, I'm probably just gonna stick to something like Walmart or like something, something not as sketchy as Shein. And they also have a makeup brand now called She Glam and I will not be putting that anywhere near my face. I wonder if anyone has tested those products for lead. I would be curious to know. But lead or not, I just don't want to support such a such an awful, awful company. All right, so getting into this Mucho Happy palette from Urban Decay. Um, I'm trying to think of what I want to do with this. The first, like, four shades of this kind of look like Naked Honey shadows, and I guess even the yellow... I mean, the there wasn't a matte yellow in the Naked Honey palette, but that look, sort of goes along with that same vibe. And then we have this bright blue color. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do. Like, do I want to go all out colorful? Will that look good with my new red hair? That's the other thing. I feel like I don't quite know what colors to wear for eyeshadow with my hair being red. Like, I feel like certain colors just don't look good on me anymore, whereas they used to, and vice versa. Okay, I'm going to start with this matte tan color called Blast. Just Let's just start with that, and then we'll figure it out from there. All right, so let's see some Instagram questions. Do you ever find makeup a chore because it's your job? I really don't. I really can't say that I've ever felt like makeup was a chore. Like, just doing my makeup, like even if makeup wasn't my job, I would still probably be doing my makeup most days, just like I do now. I just love makeup. Like that, I don't think having it as a job has changed that at all. I mean, there are certainly parts of doing YouTube that can feel like a chore. Like, you know, sometimes I don't really feel like editing or something, but makeup itself, that has never felt like a chore to me. What are five non-makeup favorites of yours right now? Can be anything. Okay, I actually wrote down my five answers so that I could remember. It's a very weird mix of things. Okay, so one answer would have to be the color depositing hair masks that I've been playing with recently. I've just been having a lot of fun with that. Uh, I mainly used Overtone, and then I also got one of the Garnier ones because it was on closeout at the grocery store the other day, and I just was like, well, I guess that's my sign that I should get this and try it. So I did a mix of Overtone and Garnier to get the color that I have now, but that was a lot of fun. And I really like that you can color your hair without committing to actually dyeing it a certain color. Like you can kind of try out different colors and it's not really damaging to your hair as far as I know, like, cause it's literally like a deep conditioner that just so happens to deposit color as well. So just a fun concept. I really like it. Okay. So number two, is these sweatpants right here. I wear these almost every day, <laughs> just around the house. And I literally got these for free from our neighborhood Buy Nothing. And I love them so much. They're actually from Zara originally, but they're this adorable periwinkle color. And every so often people will post like just a bag of clothing that they're getting rid of. And um, you can like go through, pick what you want, and then you can like re-gift anything that you're not gonna keep. And I've gotten some gems from those clothing swaps. Like I have so many pieces of clothing that I've gotten from Buy Nothing that I wear all the time, but this is my most worn piece. And the other day I was just thinking like, man, I love these sweatpants so much. They have pockets, they're such a cute color, and they're so comfy. So I've been living in those. Okay, my third favorite is these pizza crusts. Okay, these came from the grocery outlet, which is our favorite place to shop. So this is the brand Pizza Agi. I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Plant-based cauliflower gluten-free pizza crusts, which doesn't sound good at all. N normally anything cauliflower-based and gluten-free tastes like cardboard, but not these. The, like you would never guess that these are gluten-free and you would never guess that they are made of cauliflower. You know how a lot of cauliflower pizza crust or cauliflower rice or, you know, any of those cauliflower-based pretend carbs usually has that, like, cruciferous kind of taste, but this doesn't have that at all. Like, you would just think that it's a regular white flour pizza crust. So we've been making pizzas, like, several nights a week lately. It's the easiest dinner. So these are frozen, and each each crust is, like, enough for two people to split, like, a full pizza. So we've been just making our own pizzas 
for dinner a lot, and it's the easiest dinner. We'll usually just put tomato sauce, some sort of vegan cheese, um, and then we've been doing, like, either, like, fake chicken or fake beef crumbles or just whatever, like, fake meat we have on hand, and some, like, spinach or kale on top. Sometimes we put olives on it. We just kind of, we do it a little differently every time, but it's just the best, easiest dinner. It's always tasty, and these crusts are pretty nutritious. Like, the first ingredient is cauliflower, which I just, I cannot believe because it doesn't taste anything like cauliflower. Yeah, like I said, we've been getting these at the grocery outlet. I hope they don't run out of these, and it, sometimes things are in stock there for, like, a few weeks, and then they're gone, and we never see them again, which is just kind of how outlet places work, but seems like they have these pretty consistently. Just such a great easy dinner to fall back on too. Okay, so I have that peachy matte shade on. Next I'm going to build up some of the yellow shade Smiley in my outer corner. Let's see how that goes on. Pretty good. My fourth favorite non-makeup thing right now would have to be the Tree Hut body scrubs. I've talked about these before, but I'm still loving them. <laughs> Um, I recently finished the Vanilla Bean one, which is definitely, like, one of their best scents. It smells so good. Um, it's not just, like, any old vanilla. It has just the best, like, warm, cozy scent. But recently, to replace that one, I ended up getting the Desert Haze scent, which I hadn't heard of before, but that was just one of the ones they had at the store. It smells so good. It smells like something that you would get at Bath & Body Works or something. I don't really quite know what to compare it to or how to describe it, but it it smells like a really good smelling body spray or something. And the nice thing about those body scrubs is that the scent actually lingers on your skin after you've rinsed it off. Like the scent will kind of stick around all day long and I really enjoy them. So I want to just go all out and do this blue on my lid. I think I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm nervous, but let's just see what that shade is all about. Okay, my fifth and final non-makeup favorite is the Aura Ring. This is like a fitness tracker ring. They've really been picking up popularity recently, and Nathan actually got me this as a Valentine's Day present, and so far I'm loving it. I've only been wearing it for a few days, so I don't really have like much to say about it yet, but it's, it's just a really cool piece of technology. Like, I just cannot believe that this little ring can track, like, your heart rate, your body temperature, your activity, your steps. Um, and the biggest thing, like, one of the main things, like, the main reason that I wanted it was for the sleep tracking. I had a Fitbit. Um, I mean, I still have it. And it's, like, five years old. I think it's, like, the Charge 2 is what it's called. And it still works, but it stopped tracking my sleep. And so, and that was like my favorite thing about it. Like, I just really like to see my sleep data. I just think it's cool. So, and that's one of the main things that this Aura Ring is known for. The app like goes really in depth, like not just with the sleep tracking, but with everything. Like there's so much to it. It even tracks like your blood oxygen level. So like if you have any like breathing disturbances while you sleep, it'll detect that. Which fortunately it has told me that I don't seem to have any breathing disturbances when I sleep, which is good. So just a really cool thing. And um, I like it better than having to wear like a big clunky Fitbit all the time. The reason why we went with the silver, like most of the jewelry I wear is gold, but the gold ring is $200 more than the silver, even though it's not even real gold. It's, they're all made of just titanium. So the gold, the rose gold, and the black ones, those are all just dyed titanium. They're not even gold plated. So the fact that they're charging $200 extra for a different color of a titanium ring is just kind of, kind of wild to me. So that just does not seem worth paying an extra $200 for, even if you really like gold jewelry. Okay, I don't really like... See, the thing with this palette is that there's no deep matte, which is fine, but... I just feel like this look is kind of incomplete right now. I might go into this Parte shade. See what see what that does. I'm gonna apply that over where I placed the yellow because I just feel like I need something that's at least as deep as the blue. I don't want to have something lighter than the blue in my outer corner because I feel like that just looks backwards. So let's just layer that over. The yellow and see what happens. 
Yeah, I think Nathan was right when he was roasting this palette in our video, which I'll link it below if you haven't seen it yet. But he was saying, he when he was critiquing this palette, he was saying that he felt like this blue just did not go with these other colors. Look at this. It just doesn't look right with these mustard orangey tones. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So there is that. I'm really not liking this eye look at all. This is not, this is not looking good. Oh no. I should have just put that blue on the lower lash line or something. I'm gonna have to put like a deeper shade to deepen up the outer corner because I, I need some, I need some depth here. Normally I don't feel like I have to have depth in every single look that I do, but right now I'm just going to dip into my Sigma Ambiance palette and use this deep brown here because I just feel like I need some depth. All right, I might as well try and use every shade in this palette. Let's take some of this shade Spinster and kind of tap that just in the center of the lid in between the blue and the brown. All right, and then I'm just taking a little bit more of Smiley, the yellow and blending that above the crease. All right, it did get some fallout from those shimmer shades. All right, I kind of want to take some of this yellow also in the inner corner. Since this look is weird already, might as well just keep it going. And then I'm gonna use the shade Psyched on the brow bone. Okay, this is a sweet question. What is the most romantic thing your boyfriend has ever done for you? Okay, I know the answer to this. I'm just gonna use some of my brown liquid liner. This is the Annabelle Eye Ink in brown. Okay, so quick backstory. Before we started dating, we were roommates. And that's not really super relevant to the story, but in that apartment that where we were roommates, um, it was like a four bedroom townhome. So we had, it was us two and then two other people. One time in that apartment, my favorite ring that I had bought on a trip in Spain, it wasn't like a super expensive ring. I think it was like 20 euros or something, but I loved this ring so much. Actually, I can go get it and show it to you. Okay, so this is the ring. It's this really small, like thin band. I love it so much. So I bought this ring in Spain at the time that I lived in that apartment where we were roommates. And one time, tragically, this ring fell into the vent of my bathroom in that apartment. The vent was on the floor of the bathroom and this just fell down into it. I felt like I heard it land on something, but like I couldn't see it. It had definitely gone down really deep and I just thought, well, I guess I'm just never gonna see that ring again. So then fast forward like probably two years, like we had both long since moved out of that apartment and we were actually dating now and I think we were living together too at this time or maybe this was before we lived together I don't remember it doesn't really matter well one morning he comes in to the apartment with this ring and he's like here you go and I'm like how how did you get how did you find it so one of our previous roommates actually still lived in the apartment at this time but he wasn't like we weren't like friends with this dude really he was just kind of a random roommate you know but he messaged that guy and explained the story and was like I know this is kind of a weird request but would it be okay with you if I came and looked in the vent to see if I can find Sarah's ring <laughs> and he said he felt kind of like kind of awkward asking if he could do this because he hadn't really talked to this dude in a couple years and the guy was like sure come on and this guy he, he was almost like a super chill guy he's the kind of guy that's just like oh, yeah yeah whatever yeah sure come on over so he went over and somehow he was able to open up the vent and I, I don't know I think he had to like really take it apart to find it and it was really deep down in there but so, I think he he said he had to use like a metal clothes hanger to like reach down in there and he got it. And you know, I had already kind of like mentally moved on from losing this ring because it had happened years ago and I just had already come to terms with the fact that I was never gonna get it back. But he went and got it. And that was just the nicest, sweet, like just one of the sweetest gestures. And that was like towards the beginning of our relationship too, but that has just always stuck with me. So 
Okay, another question. What's the oldest product in your collection and what year did you get it? Okay, so I'm looking at my makeup inventory now. The oldest products in my collection are from 2018. That's the earliest year that I bought any of my current products. The oldest one is from March 2018 and it is a single shadow from Makeup Geek. Let me, let me find it. Let me get it out. All right, it is my last Makeup Geek shadow. I bought more at the same time as this one, but this is the only one I still have. And it's the shade Grandstand. This is a beautiful shadow. I actually want to try to hit pan on this shadow this year. Um, it's a really pretty, just like rose gold, bronzy kind of shade. Just a really pretty lid shade. It still feels really creamy. Doesn't feel like it's dried out or anything. But yeah, that right there is my oldest product. Okay, I think I'm going to do sort of a peachy nude lip. Let's just go for it. Um, all right, last question, because we're almost done with the makeup look. Have you ever felt like you had to hide a purchase or fake panning progress because of your viewers? No, I can't imagine when I, when I would even feel pressured to do something like that. Really, like, whenever I make a makeup purchase, I have my channel in mind. Like, I'm always thinking, like, is this something that, you know, my viewers are going to want to hear about? Is this like relevant to the beauty community at this moment when I'm deciding if it's something I want to buy? Like those are always kind of questions that I have in my mind. Um, but I'd never have bought something that I felt like I had to hide from my viewers. And I've never faked panning progress either. I don't know. How would you fake panning progress? I guess if you wasted a product intentionally or like, you know, just like really like drilled your brush into a shade in order to hit pan. I've never done that um, because there's just no point to that. I feel like you guys would be able to tell if I was like making unrealistically fast progress on something. I feel like that would be kind of obvious. Like sure, maybe that would get more clicks on a video or something, but it wouldn't be worth it to... I, I just couldn't bring myself to do something like that. I'm just gonna go over that with a sheer gloss. This is the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Champagne Glam. It's like a sort of shimmery champagne color. Mm. No, I'm not liking this lip. I'm not liking this lip at all. Let me do something else. I think I'm just gonna be boring and do like a nude lip lip oil, lip gloss. This is the Sigma Renew Lip Oil. Kind of just a sheer nude shade. This is the shade called Tint. I just feel like with this eye look, I can't do much on the lips without it looking weird. Just don't really know what, what colors even go with this eye look. Okay, so there's the final look. Kind of a weird eye look. About this palette, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't love this eye look. I just feel like it's... I think I don't really like this shade of blue on me. I don't usually like those kind of like aqua blue colors, so maybe I should have expected not to really love how that looks on my eyes. But the other shades I do like in this palette. I like the like soft golden yellow vibe there. So I'll probably use those other shades a fair amount. Yeah, I mean, all the shades worked fine. You know, they all showed up on my eyes. They were all kind of that typical Urban Decay Naked formula to me. They feel just like all the other naked shadows that I've tried. Not really anything remarkable, but also not bad. Like, they work and everything. So that's my first impressions on this palette. I'll definitely keep you posted on my developing thoughts on that. This other one, I might actually just pass on. Like, I might not even touch it and just go ahead and, you know, maybe include it for like a giveaway later on or something, because I just don't really see myself using these shades. I definitely won't use that purple shade very much. I don't know if I would use this red shade either. So yeah, I think I might just not even try this palette at all. I think we'll keep the Mucho Happy one, but I think I might just pass on the Chill Happy while it's brand new. I don't know, do you plan on picking up either of these Naked Smiley palettes? I... I don't know. I think it's kind of a weird launch. <laughs> kind of weird, kind of just... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really think it's anything that special. I think you can probably skip these palettes unless you're just a huge fan of the smiley face. In which case, you know, maybe it would be a fun product to have. I do think the packaging is really pretty. I just feel like the shadows themselves are kind of 
kind of bleh, you know, kind of kind of lackluster. But let's go ahead and end on this question. Can you please show the kitten on camera? Cat intermission? So, I mean, I guess this won't really be an intermission, but once I wrap up the video, I'll put in like about a minute or so of cat footage of our cats. I'm not sure which cat you wanted to see, but I'll go ahead and include all three of them. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to support my channel further, you can check out the Patreon or the channel membership where I have bonus content going up each month. Um, but otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and stick around if you want to see some cat footage.